Hi everybody, this is Jason Brown from Global Animations and today I'm going to show you how to take a vector logo and knock it out in 3D using Adobe Illustrator and Maxon's Cinema 4D. Uh, I'm going to split this up into a few different sections. First off, what to do with the original vector file in Illustrator to make sure that it works with Cinema. Then setting up the file in Cinema 4D and finally just a quick run through on texture and lighting setup. Not going to focus too much in those areas though. Uh, this is really geared towards broadcast designers out there that are just starting out and probably uh, maybe using Photoshop and some After Effects. Uh, a lot of times trying to learn a 3, 3D program on your own can be a little intimidating uh, and really because it can do so many things that are really cool but don't really relate to what you're trying to do as a broadcast designer. So with that in mind, uh, this should kind of get you up to speed on the basics of Cinema 4D and help you out the next time your boss hands you a logo and says, hey, you got 20 minutes, uh, make this do something cool. So let's go ahead and get started. I thought long and hard about what logo I wanted to use for this tutorial. Surfed around on brandsoftheworld.com, came up with a really great one, the Duff Beer logo. So brandsoftheworld.com, you can grab this logo there. Uh, really cool site. Uh, if you have time, you can surf around on there. Got a lot of really neat stuff on there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, open Illustrator. All right, we've got our Duff Beer logo here. First thing you need to know when you import a logo into into Cinema 4D, Cinema doesn't like any of the layers to be overlapping. So go ahead and just shift click on these layers and move them just out from on top of each other. Shouldn't take too long with this logo. There's not a lot of parts. And let's get the uh, back layer here. Okay, really this is the extent of your involvement with Adobe Illustrator in this version. Uh, file save as. You want to save this out as another file name. Uh, go ahead and hit save. Whenever this pops up you're going to hit uh, version 8, Illustrator version 8. If you don't do this it's not going to import in Cinema, right? So be sure not skip this step. Very important. Hit OK, and we are done with the Illustrator. Let's go ahead and go to Cinema. OK, let's import the logo into Cinema 4D. First thing you'll notice is the logo is a little off screen. You want to go click on your logo here, all your layers, and your X and Y position coordinates are not zeroed out like your Z, so just go ahead and do that first off always center in your logo. It'll help you in the long run. And I like to be looking at the logo straight on before I do anything. Let's zoom out a little bit. So there's all the pieces we did earlier. Go ahead and uh, take this down. You'll notice you have all the raw splines in here. You want to start moving things back here in a second to where the logo is on top of each other. Um, what you want to do is you hit your preview, nothing happens, you don't see anything, there's a reason for that. These are still just the raw splines, you need to extrude them to be able to see anything in 3D. So click here and hold, go to extrude NURBS, and you'll see you have an object now. Go ahead and select all of these spline objects and drop them in here. When you do that, only one of them are, is going to light up. If you click back on your extrude ob NURB object, hit hierarchical, they'll all fire up right there and you can delete this out, we don't need that anymore. Uh, first off, let's clean this up a little bit, start labeling things so we know what's what. That's the top flap. That would be the pack parts, we'll call it back. There's the white box. Your text layers. I believe that's both F's. There's the circle and it's the remaining text. Okay, now everything's labeled and extruded. You want to go ahead and kind of make some tweaks before you start putting things together. You notice the text is a little boxy and raw. Go into your extrude NURB object, add yourself a little bit of subdivision there. If you go into caps, fillet cap, Turn that on. Uh, I usually set it to around, let's say, three on both. There we go. That'll smooth out the edges a little bit. If you'll see the preview, you've got a little bit more of a round edge now. And now the the circle looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to where we were. Now we can start moving things uh, 
back to where the actual logo was. Let's go ahead and move our text back over. Doesn't have to be exact for the purposes here, but you can load a reference image uh, like a Targa or JPEG of the logo if you want to really get it exact. Let's bring the top load, top flap back in, the back plate. Not really sure where all of this goes, but uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Let's move the white box back in. All right. So now it looks perfect, right? No. Can't really tell what it is. Everything's sitting on top of each other right now, so we want to move things around a little bit to try to get this looking a little bit more like the original logo. Move your back plate back and your text out, and you'll see it start shaping up pretty nice. You can zoom in and turn around if you need to, or hit F5 on your keyboard. That gives you your views, your top right, front, and perspective view, or individually F1, F2, F3 and so on. Okay, it looks like the uh, everything looks pretty good right now. Maybe uh, the beer text can come out just a little bit. Okay, so before we move on any further, we want to get rid of these splines and make them into polygons. How you do that? Let's go ahead and label this. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I like to keep things organized. Make sure you clicked on your logo, hit objects, and then current state to object. That's going to make a copy of this logo basically with polygons. Now you can texture individual uh, your individual caps on your polygons. Now we've got two of these we just need to get rid of the top one we don't need it anymore. Alright we're ready to start texturing this thing and make it look a little bit better. File, new material, let's make a black layer Make sure you cl clicked on the color channel. All right, let's label this uh, black text. This is for the Duff Beer text. Do another one, file, new material. With this one, go to the luminance channel, turn it on, and bump it up just about, say, 20 or so. We'll make this a white layer for the white box. Uh, the rest of the colors of the logo we need to match with the original logo from the uh, the flattened vector file. So the way I do that is go into Illustrator and write down, color pick the uh, different colors and write, them, write down the RGB values. I've already done that so we don't have to sit here and do that now. Let me open up that file. RGBs. Okay. First one, the top flap. We have 102, 0, and 0. That's the RGB values. So let's go back into Cinema. New material. Double click on it. Let's label this the top flap. Values were 102. Tab, tab, 0. Tab, tab, 0. Tab to get off of it. And there's the color. Common mistake everybody makes a lot of time is last time we made it a texture we were in the uh, luminance channel now if you close this out nothing's there the reason is we're still on the luminance channel it's not activated we gotta make sure to click back on the color channel 102 0 0 now it's there now it shows up okay we can go back to our text object the back plate 203 0 and 0 so remember those numbers Two or three, zero, zero. There's the back piece. Let's go back to our text object again. The beer text one o two zero and zero. Okay. Last but not least, the circle two o three, two o three, and one o one. Okay, and we'll label this circle. Okay, now we have all the textures that we need for it, so let's start drag and dropping. Drop this down. Top flap. We'll drag it on there. The back. Drag it on. 
Next is the white box. Now the text. Now that we've separated this out, we can texture the text different colors if we needed to. Uh, you can drag and drop the texture there, or if it's going to have the same one, here's another trick. Click on it, hold control, and click and drag, and it'll make an instance of it. Now we need the circle. And our beer text. Same thing here. Drag it in. Click on it. Control drag. There we go. Finally, the logo is starting to take shape and look actually pretty decent. I notice uh, the top flap is a little far forward, so we can probably scoot that back. And maybe bring it down now. Of course, reference the original logo to see really where it needs to go. Okay, now our logo's basically knocked out in 3D. Let's go ahead and uh, take the circle, bring it back a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and do a preview and see what it looks like. Not too bad. Of course, you want to take this a little step uh, further. Let's go ahead and add a light to the scene so we're not in the standard default lighting. F5 to go to our views. Let's move this light in front of the object. Let's move it up a little higher on top. Probably a little farther back too. F1 to get back to our normal perspective view. Looking pretty good. You can turn on uh, shadows for the light. Click on your light. Do soft shadows. There you go. Make it look a little bit better. Okay, animation. Uh, let's just go through this really quickly. I'll just show you the quick way to animate here. Let's add a camera. Click on it. Okay, and we want to set this to about 10 seconds, so let's make this 300 frames click and drag here to show your whole timeline and say so we're starting off at three seconds so kind of animate backwards here click on your logo first uh, we're at zero right now hit a keyframe let's go back to the beginning of our timeline you want to rotate that around hit your rotate tool and what we'll do is we'll do um, let's say uh, 30 degrees negative 30 enter set another keyframe there we go over three seconds it'll rotate 30 degrees let's go back to frame 90 we'll go to your camera let's go ahead and hit a keyframe on three seconds and go back to the beginning again now we want to zoom in let's just zoom in to that little dot up there we'll start the animation off on the little circle click on your logo if you want a little bit more control over getting up there it's a little easier sometimes. Okay, perfect. Get back on your camera and hit a keyframe. Now you'll notice when I play this, uh, it's going to basically animate down below our field of view. So you can just quickly go in about halfway, 45 frames, and set another keyframe after you've moved it up. Now if we go back, hit play, not too bad. Good for a quick uh, animation. You'll notice when it ends, it ends rather abruptly and just sits there. I made this 300 frames so we could add a little bit of movement and drift to it, so it's not just a stationary logo. So go to the end of your uh, timeline there, click back on your logo, and let's just move it around a little bit. Click back on the camera, hit your keyframe, and now if you play it, you'll notice it'll give it a little bit of movement. Looks a lot better than uh, just sitting there. And that's basically a quick uh, animation there.